Joe, it is, I can't believe now how much it is to fill up 20 litres, you know, 10 miles on. It's not, not quite 80 and a half litres. So a litre and a half left. 32 pounds and 6 pence. How do you choose your new bike? I'm going to run through some parameters which go through my mindset. When I set out uh, to purchase a new bike, I'll obviously look at the market and see what genre of motorcycle suits my style of riding and what I'm looking for. I'm not going to choose a sports bike if I'm after a, a comfortable style cruiser or a touring bike. So once the genre has set me mind of what will suit me, I then look at the market and see what's, what's on the market and I make my final choices. When I start off and do the test ride, I set out five parameters which I'm looking for. Uh, the first one is the ergonomics, the feel of the bike, how, how it actually is to sit on the seating position, the handlebar position and the footrest position. I then go about going through urban riding as I set off see what it's like, the, the, the manners of the bike, how the engine performs, how, how the suspension absorbs any of the bumps low down, how manoeuvrable is it at uh, low speeds. I then go on the motorway and test the wind protection of the screen, um, the ergonomics, uh, vibrations, its speed. Um, the engine is another area I look at uh, during all these um, elements just to see how, the, how it performs, how it feels, all the way through um, and finally B road testing see how it handles see once again how the engine performs during the urban cycle what I'm also looking from an ergonomics point of view is is the switch gear the tactileness of it does it feel quality does it work does it do as it's supposed to do the functionality also needs to be quick and easy when I press the heated grip button I expect to see the heated grips turn on not have to delve and go into a menu like you used to have to do in the V4S Multistrada before they've done the software update. If you want it, if the heated grips on, you press the button, it should come on and you can scroll through whatever heat, heat levels you want. Also, the mode button. I'd expect to see the mode button. You just press it, press the mode button, bring up, select, rain, road, sport, whatever parameters, whatever bike, how they, how they word it, and should be able to just switch it on. When you first get the bike, or when I get a bike, I look at all the parameters, I get them set, I mess about with it, change things. Once that's done, I very rarely touch it again. All I expect to do is, if I'm riding along and I hit some rain showers, is to press the mode button, change the mode to rain, and that's it, it does it. Not having to go back deep into a menu again and try and change the parameters. So that's what I'm looking for. A good thing, on the, the Triumph and the Multistrada V4S is that your switch gear is backlit. It's not at the moment on the XR. Right at the end of this video, I'm going to just put, pull together just a, a combination of um, engine tests I've done. Uh, things I look out for when um, I'm assessing the, the bike itself. I'll be doing a roll-on test which will be simulating an overtake from 50 mile an hour up to 70 mile an hour in top gear. What I will caveat at this point is that the the Tiger top gear is it's a very long gear, much longer than on the XOR and on the Multistrada. On the Tiger at 70 mile an hour, in fifth gear it's doing 4,600 revs. The XOR in sixth gear is doing 4,600 revs, and sixth gear in the V4. S Multistrada is 4,600 revs. So in essence, this test could have actually been done with the Tiger in fifth gear to match the engine speed of the other two. But I didn't, I done it with in sixth gear, which reflects in the time it's taken because of that longer gearing. What I'll also be doing is simulate and drive out of a corner. So I'll be dropping the engine speed down to about 3,000 revs in second gear and, and um, timing the, the pickup of the engine all the way through the rev range. I'm doing it uh, using the gears up to 70 mile an hour plus. Now then.
seam position on the XO is traditionally much the same as all adventure bikes. The seat to the handlebar is nice and wide. Uh, what I would say is that the, the foot position here is slightly higher than what you would find on uh, most adventure, like sports bikes, adventure, tourers, whatever category they all fall into now. I think it's just merged. The Cisque on the, the BMW is virtually the same across the whole range, depending on what accessories and package you've got. What I do like about the arrangement and how the functionality of the switches are, um, is that that's quite simple and straightforward, there's no having to delve into, into the um, menu of the, of the on-screen display to try and um, switch on some of the function, functions. What I mean by that is your, you've got your heated grip button, which is simple and straightforward. You press it once, it comes on high. You press it again, it goes in number two, which is medium. Again, number one, which is low. You press it again and it's off. And it's as straightforward as that. What is good about it as well is that when you turn the engine off, you switch off the bike, you come to, to get back on again, it remembers what the last setting was. So you don't have to go through and switch it back on again when you get a couple of miles down the road and realise that they are, the heated grips have um, not turned on. The heated grips on, the, on probably most BMWs now are fantastic. The heat range, you know, from the, from the low up to the highest are, are quite hot actually, they're very hot. Found the ones on the multi shot out were pretty much the same. I wouldn't say it's quite as hot on the high, but they were still nice and toasty. Another switch we've got on, on the right handle handlebar cluster is the mode switch, the engine mode, which at the moment you can I don't know if you can see, but I've got it in dynamic. Uh, once again, all you do is you, you scroll through it, you press it to engage it. Press it again, it goes to Dynamic Pro, press it again, goes to Raid, Rain, it goes to Road, back to Dynamic, and all you do is, once you've selected it, you just roll off the throttle and it's engaged, it's as straightforward as that. You don't have to go in any menus to select the modes and to go through that, that rigmarole, it's, it's dead simple. I'll put it back on the Dynamic again, select the mode, Rain, Road, Dynamic, roll off the throttle and there we go. The suspension button on the left hand side here, it's was di dictated to by a, an icon of a shock absorber. You press that once, it brings up a sub menu which shows you the settings that the, the suspension is currently set at. Now that only stays on five seconds and goes off again. So really, you view it, if you press it again, it changes between road and dynamic. What that does, it changes the changes the um, the, the rebound compression. Oh, just now you a little dicky bird over. It uh, varies the, the the parameters of the rebound and compression. Now in road mode, it softens everything off, absorbs the bumps, but it still maintains a firmish, sporty ride. But it's a hell of a lot better than it was on this on the. Generation 1 bikes and the dynamic, when you go into dynamic mode, which I'm in now, it firms everything up for a sportier ride. And you can feel the difference on this version. Once again, it's just a simple push of the buttons and it does it for you. There we're back in road. Now, if you push the button to bring up the sub menu, press and hold, and it goes between automatic and your individual settings. Now, it'll not let you do that when you're actually moving on the motorcycle. You've got to be at a standstill. But at the moment, I've got it set on automatic, as you can see. And what that means is it'll automatically adjust the preload on the rear suspension to accommodate whatever weight you've got on. Now, if we get a passenger on, it'll it'll jack the back end of the bike up to uh, to where it deems to be the right optimum position. Same as if you put luggage on in a passenger, it'll jack it up again. Um, so 
I just leave it on automatic because what's the point of doing it manually? Unless you want to firm the back end up so it tips you in at the front. If you want to go on a sporty or ride, to check the suspension, the thing in, you've got a big load on the back. That's the only reason why I could think of why you wouldn't have it on the automatic segments. Cruise control, cruise control on this, you don't have the adaptive cruise control of which you have got on the, the V4S Multistrada. I believe it's an option on the Tiger 1200 if you get the Explorer version. It doesn't have it on the GT Pro. Um, or there again, I think on the Explorer option, it's just the, the um, blind spot monitoring. It hasn't got adaptive cruise control. That's right, they, they left that off. It's an absolute glorious day to be out doing a little little test ride on your bike. Sun shining, it's a little bit nippy, 4 degrees centigrade. There's still a lot of salt on our roads over the last uh, week. The week just passed there. We've had um, quite a little bit of uh, quite a bit of snow up here in the northeast of England. bright, fresh, crisp day. Now, urban riding on this bike is exceptional, I would say. With the engine being in inline four, four cylinder, the smoothness low down is brilliant. Uh, the quick shift that is silky smooth, as I'll demonstrate now. slow down again just because uh, just exiting the 30 mile an hour so the quick shift is very smooth and so is the, the actual engine running itself even as low down now I mean I'm I'm down to 2000 revs sixth gear 27 mile an hour down to one and a half thousand revs 24 mile an hour throttle and it pulls away smoothly away it goes and that's from one and a half thousand revs in, in six gear one negative point I would say is that the fueling just at a certain rev if you're trying to maintain a slow speed say like yeah at 30 mile an hour it's a slight a slight on off of the throttle I don't know if that's to do with Euro 4, or I don't know if I have Euro 5 now, but it's just a little bit of, um, just a li little bit of uh, hesitancy in the throttle, in the fueling. Right, so we've uh, moved now onto a faster bit of road. We've got up to the national speed limit of 70 mile an hour, and the screen's in the high position. And there's, there's a little bit of wind noise, but nothing to write home about. There's no buffeting whatsoever. Now I do have, to caveat this, I do have the BMW official touring screen on this. It came, it came on the bike. So in the high position, there's no buffeting and there's no wind on my shoulders whatsoever. I wouldn't say it's a, it's a bubble of calm, because I can't feel maybe it's just a little bit of wind on the top of my helmet. And I'm 5 foot 11 in the morning, dropping to about 5, 10 and a half by the evening time. So it's just clipping the top of my head. The wind's just been directed, but there's nothing else. There's nothing on my shoulders, nothing on my chest. What I'll do is I'll take it, I'll drop it, I'll drop the screen down. Now I've got a lot, a lot more wind noise hitting me, hitting probably me eye level in the visor, but there's still no buffeting. It's still like clean air, no buffeting. I'll take it back up again, and the calmness comes back. What I'll do now, now is I'll take it up to usually when we cruise in the UK, it's about 80 mile an hour, officer. A uh, little bit more wind noise, but definitely no, no, no buffeting whatsoever. Nothing on my shoulders, nothing on my chest. A little bit of wind I can, I can feel on the top of my helmet, and apart from that... What I find with this bike is that the handling is 
is absolutely sublime. It's rock steady in the corners. It's very flickable side to side.
some people call things character. It's when it becomes a problem, it's an, I- an issue. If it gives you tingling hands and whatever you. And I, know, I find I don't get that on this bike. Now then, today we're on the Multistrada V4S. What I can say straight off is that the feeling I can get about the fueling is absolutely spot on. There's no surging. Um, and the connection between the throttle just sounds uh, feels superb. One little downside to that is that the engine does not like to be just sitting down low here at 2000 revs. It starts looking, you feel as though you're really lugging the engine and it's very clunky and uh, chuggy uh, low down so you've got to keep it spinning a little bit higher than what you would expect. There you are, you can, ooh, you can now feel the chugging away there now, it's down to 2,000 words. I am in fourth gear, I've dropped down to third, and yeah, it, it's, it picks up a little bit better. So once you get it up, spinning around about three to 4,000 revs, it's sitting happier, but it does not like it down below. Now the sitting position is, uh, it's, it's very good actually. Um, my knees are probably about 90 degrees, um, the foot rests are, in a comfortable position, handlebars are nice and wide. Um, they could have done with being a little bit higher. I'm, I'm slightly leaned forward, um, and they are quite a span, uh, quite a reach to them. They just seem to be a little bit, um, probably an, an inch too far away. Uh, the buttons themselves are quite tactile, um, nice, and I believe that they actually illuminate during the night. Um, and there's just a little tog- toggle switch there for your, your menus and whatever. It's just standard stuff. But I have noticed that there's a, a quite a lot of bulk around the tank area and the weight feels uh, quite high up and it's quite weighty and bulky. Now let's uh, see what it's like to get into Newton. Yeah, straight in, snick straight in. So uh, that's quite easy. The standover of this seat could have been done with it being a little bit narrower. But um, I can virtually flat foot. My heels are just, uh, you get a feel like years between the heel and the ground, so I'm not quite 100% flat foot. Chugga, 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 then it's all right. When you apply the revs from just over like two and a half thousand revs, apply the revs slowly, smooth, you know, it's quite smooth. You only get the, the chugging sensation, the roughness, when you apply full throttle, when it really accelerates, it just gives you a little bit of, a little bit of vibration, a little bit of chugger, but then it's away. It's not really a bad thing, it's just an observation. first to second right we we'll just drop down now onto some uh, faster roads just to see what the um, aerodynamics and uh, the windscreen protection of that is uh, the first thing I notice here as we're picking up speed the, the, you get a really good solid sound feeling with the bike it's it's very stable Right, we're cruising along now at 70 mile an hour. I've got the screen in the low position and I am getting some um, buffeting and wind noise just hitting the visor area on the helmet and I'm getting quite a bit of um, wind and buffeting on the shoulders themselves. So I put the screen down to being probably average, not the best. Right, we'll now try it with the screen uh, in the up position. And yeah, now now the 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 air's deflected right. You're just just catching the top of the helmet, but I still have got the um, the the wind and the buffeting on my shoulders. Uh, the screen has lifted it up uh, slightly higher. But there's there's no buffeting on my head. It's just my shoulders and arms where where it's really hitting. 
once again, the, the bulk um, of the tank in that, you're, you're aware of the bulk and it, it actually gives you a bit of uh, wind protection, but you can still feel the weight. It's, it's, it doesn't feel as slim as the, um, the old Multistrada, the 1260. Um, there's a lot of substantial more bulk, just a bulky feeling. I wouldn't say it's heavy, it's just there's a lot of mass there. There's plenty of go on this engine, as you know, it's really wanting to go there. Once it starts spinning up to about 5,000 revs, the way it goes there, the engine's magnificent. Now it just cruises along here at 80 mile an hour, it's just under 5,500 revs. Uh, there's no engine vibes, it's just standard normal vibes, nothing to write home about. Now the screen's dead easy to adjust, just nip the brackets there and push it down and down. Uh, it's got a dead smooth and uh, very light action.
have been raining for about nearly two hours now and I can see that it's uh, very comfortable no bum pain, nothing no pain in the foot could have maybe he's done with the handlebars a little bit higher they seem to be down there maybe he's up there, we'll make it sit up just a little bit more Nothing to set the ball risers wouldn't cure. The suspension's a little bit firm on air uh, tool run and it's in um, medium setup. Let's see what enduro is like. Medium again. Urban, medium. To summarise, this is a very, very Good bike, excellent in fact. The fueling is spot on. The only slight downside, if it is a downside, another observation I would say, it doesn't like to be down below 3,000 revs. It's okay if you're just sitting cruising like I am now, just under 3,000 revs. But if you try to accelerate, It'll pull, but it'll vibrate and it'll give you a bit of um, chatter. Which can be understandable because they have designed this to be like a firing order, like a, similar to a V-twin. So you can understand that. But any, anything over like 4,000 revs and it's just turbine smooth. And the torque and the uh, power on the engine's fantastic. The brakes are superb. Back brake on its own is pretty enough. All the electronics are brilliant, all work. Tried everything out. And the only downside I had a half a tank. I've done about nearly 70 miles, 64 miles, and I had used, I was down in reserve. And I've had to put 15 pound, 50 of the English pound in, just to top it up. So it's well documented. The fueling on this is uh, pretty enough, but hey, you get what you pay for, you know about it. If you can afford this type of bike, you can afford to put the fuel in. So, not be an issue. What I have noticed is the heated grips, when you've turned it off and back on again, they stay on the last setting, which is good. It reminds me of, oh, I've got to turn them off. What I have noticed is that between first and second gear, I'm using the clutch, because I'm not, it be a little bit, a little bit clunky, not too bad, and I'm getting a slight, a slight bit of heat. I had to double check to make sure I didn't have the heated seat on. I'm getting a little bit of heat uh, on the seat. I'm assuming that the, the heads, the cylinder head of the V4 is somewhere under there. I'm just getting a bit of heat through off it. I imagine that can uh, roast your inner thighs if you're riding in a hot country. Right, so where shall we start? The new Triumph 1200, this is the GT Pro model. And that uh, screen takes just a little bit of time to warm up, I've noticed. Yeah, sounds a little bit uh, fruity. The 
special feeling is the, I probably just need to get used to it. But the um, the biting point on the clutches, well, it's very nearly out. And I've just had a bit of play with the adjustment on it, and it's at the it's um it's at its closest position to the ball, and it's still quite a bit of a span. A reach to try and uh, grab it, so it's right at the end of its uh, bite. Quick shift does nice and smooth. You can actually feel the roughness of the engine, the gruffness. It's uh, as they uh, advertise on the tin. It's it's very much like a, a parallel twin. Down in the rev range. The right position feels very comfortable. My legs are not even 90 degrees, and the reach to the handlebars is just comfortable, nice and wide enough, and then nice height keeps your back straight. And the seating position is really nice. I like this. At the moment, I've got it in, I think it's road mode. Triumph um, description and the suspension is very plush. I'll try the heated grips to see what that's high. Press them once high, press it twice, it goes to medium. And I would imagine once again it's on low, once again it's off. So it's very much uh, quite similar to the. Uh, the multi and the BMW XR. What I don't know yet is whether they stay on to the last position when the engine's been turned off. The brakes on the Tiger are very nice, an initial bite, but they're very progressive. They're nice, them. I'll try the back brake in a minute when the road clears. Nothing behind. Yeah, back brake's fine. What I have noticed is just on and off the throttle. See that? It, it seemed to be a lot of slack in the throttle. And then it just suddenly kicks in. Strange that. It's probably a fueling issue, and hopefully Triumph is aware of it, and they're going to resolve it in the next um, software update. But um, that is probably the first negative of the now. I'll just try it again, just as you're on and off the throttle, yeah. Off the throttle, back on. No. Don't like that. I'm going to go a bit faster road and I'll just try the, um, the wind protection. We're doing 70 miles an hour at a boat. 4,500 revs. Top me head, no problem. I've got a slight bit of wind on my arms, just on the side of my arms, but not my shoulders. So the wind protection is pretty good. I'll take it up a little bit. Yeah, it's right over the top. Now that's it, the, the, the screen in the highest position. I'll drop it down. And I've got a little bit of wind just hitting the top of my helmet. There's no buffing whatsoever. And once again, there's a little bit of wind just on my arms. On my biceps, the top of my arms, but not the shoulders. The wind's deflected over and past my shoulders. Very easy to adjust. I've got 
got to say the sitting position is very comfortable. Everything for me anyway, at 5 foot 11, everything is in an ideal position. Like the reach to the handlebars, the seating position, the back's nearly straight, my legs are 90 degrees or probably more than 90 degrees. Tiny, tiny little bit of little bit of buzz, but it's nothing. The brakes are lovely, very progressive. They give you the right amount of feel. There you go again, there's the on and off. Just come round and round about, it's on, off, on, off. Don't like that at all. Big issue, but once again, 
it's one further step than what I would take on the XO. But the suspension itself in road mode, it's very, very plush. It's quite nice without being actually overly bouncy. It's still keeping the a firm um, raid on the handling. I think what I'll do now is I'll try the um, the rain mode to see if there's any sense any difference.
switch gear is laid out quite well actually, it's quite uh, tactile and it works quite well. The only thing I've got to try and get used to is the, um, is the little joystick. I've went for the indicator thinking it was the joystick a couple of times, but that's just muscle memory, I think I would get used to that. I'm used to the uh, multifunctional wheel on the BMW, which is a fantastic, um, a fantastic gadget. But everything else seems okay. It's easy enough to reach. As you can see, I'm pottering along here, sixth gear, 30 mile an hour. Uh, it's doing about 2,250 mile uh, revs a minute. What I did notice uh, on the handling stakes is that um, there's not a, a massive amount of engine brake and there's a little bit there, but it's not like a massive amount, which I enjoyed on the multi -strawder. That's got a lot of engine braking. Shift has great even from first to second, just snicks it straight in, no problem. The engine sounds rather gruff and rough, um, especially low down range. But once you start opening the throttle and it builds, there's a, uh, there's a really lovely induction roll. It's a nice sound. So again, the heated grips have been on now for a good 30 minutes, and uh, they're just medium hot. I wouldn't say they're like piping hot. The BMW ones are far superior. Now, what I did notice, I turned the engine off before and back on, and they don't stay on. You've got to reset them. Right, just to summarise on the bike, I'm just going to take it back now to the dealers. Um, a couple of minor points, one being the heated grips aren't that hot, and the probably most important one is the snatchiness on off the throttle. They're the two negative points, the positive points are many. The handling, the comfort, the smoothness of it, which is surprising when it, it's got this tape plane firing crank with the fire, the uneven fire and order, which gives you that lumpiness low down, but as people say, all the reviews have been done, it's character, and I totally agree with them. The uh, riding position is very comfortable, as I said before, handling's great, the engine, it probably hasn't got the, the, out, um, the utmost punch and grunt that the multi shot has got, but it's, you know, it's not that far behind. The wind protection is pretty good. As I said, just a small bit of air puffing on my arms, my upper arms, whereas the rest of it was smooth. A little bit of air noise at the top of the helmet when the, the screen was in the lower position. Don't notice the 19 inch front, front wheel at all. Doesn't feel much difference to the XR. The weight on this, the balance is fantastic. It's uh, That is much better than it is on the Multi Strada. The Multi Strada holds its weight slightly higher up, and there's more bulk in front of you, in front of your tank. There seems to be more bulk on the multi -strata. I think the weights, they're pretty similar. There's not a lot of difference. They will go again, they're just the on-off the throttle. If they get that fixed, then this will be a swashing bike. Just one other thing on this, the, uh, the brakes is fantastic. Very, there's an initial bite, but they're very progressive. It 
lot of feel on them. They're really nice, and they should be. Being top of the range, Stylemas, Brembo Stylemas. The suspension is very plush when you, you got it on the road and it firms right up. There's a noticeable difference between riding modes, which, which can't be said on many other bikes, but there is a notable difference on this one. There's not a lot of dive on the suspension. There's not a lot of dive. There's an initial dip, but then the suspension just seems to grab hold of it. This electronic suspension is great on this. I hope there's a way to um, adjust the clutch. Because just, well, that's just me not used to the biting point.
coming here. test it was so linear just pulling strongly stronger 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 all the way up the red, red range just to give a little explanation of what i've done the xr is actually my bike and i've used that as a benchmark to measure the tiger and the multistrada against so what i'm trying to do i'm trying to choose a bike which will complement the XR. I've got the XR for the, the weekend blast. I can also do tour on it, which I've done. But I want something that um, is totally the opposite to what I've already got. So here we are. What do I think? Three very different sort of bikes, same category, but different in the way that they ride. I was very surprised with the Tiger low down, the punch and that engine it sounds like a twin low down and it feels like a twin but once you get the engine spinning it's very much like sounds like a v4 to tell the truth when it starts singing um and the power is just where you want it low down to to mid and upper range it'll drive right through it hasn't got the out outright power of the multistrada when would you use it or when would i use it on a track maybe i don't do track days so, which one would I choose? Be the Tiger, and I'll tell you why. The Tiger is not as powerful as the Multistrada, but it's a hell of a lot lighter in the feel, flickable. It's got a better suspension, in my opinion. It's got better brakes, in my opinion. The only one flaw it's got, which I think can be cured, is the slight snatchiness of the throttle, especially in sports mode. Don't get us wrong, the Multistrada is an absolutely fantastic bike. It really is a lovely motor on it. Um, it gets its power, I would say, in the middle third, where the Tiger is the lower to middle third, and the XR, which is my bike anyway, and I'll be keeping that one, which is probably the, the final third in the rev range. So really, Looking at the Tiger as a second bike, for me, personally, I've got the lower lower end, but I've also got the comfort for the uh, touring ability of the Tiger. It also has the shaft drive, which is a bonus. I've already got train drive on the XR. So for me, this fills the gap, and it, uh, it merges the lower end with the top end, um, with the Multistrada coming somewhere in between. As I said, it's a fantastic bike, the Multistrada, but it's not for me. Now, just to caveat my feelings on the on these three bikes and how they're riding that, uh, it's just to point out that these are my opinions. Uh, it's how I feel and it's how I perceive them. The uh, timings, I know that when I've done the timings on the on the acceleration tests and that, they were done on different days um, and there was different parameters. So... You take them reasons with a pinch of salt. It's just what I found and it's just what I'm showing you. Uh, the perceived feeling that I got and the timings which took place when I done the tests.